Hey everyone and welcome to another episode with Game Dev London and I'm Lorraine Ansel, your host today and today we have the fabulous Lauren. So, yay! <laughs> um, Lauren is a content creator on YouTube and is the host of the podcast She Plays Games, which is a show that celebrates women in the industry and offers visibility to many different roles that are available within the industry as well. So, um, Hello, Lauren. It's the Lauren and Lauren show here today. Yay! It should be an actual like TV show. Like I think we used oh in America we had like um oh what was it Lorraine and Shirley. Lorraine and Shirley could be Lauren and Lorraine <gasps> instead. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Anybody? Anybody listening? We're available. <laughs> yes, we're available. So tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get started in the industry? Sure. Um, I mean, so I kind of. Um, I've always been into games. Like I've always really loved playing video games and stuff. I kind of started when I was a kid uh, playing uh, NES games because my aunt Trisha had a, uh, a big Nintendo and um, at my grandparents' house. And so I did like the traditional Mario, hold the Nintendo gun up to the screen and do duck hunt unfairly. Um, and <laughs> Uh, but then my dad uh, surprised me one Christmas with a Sega Genesis. I didn't ask for it or anything. He was just kind of like, here's a Sega Genesis. Take was it. This, was this for you or for him? This, uh, well, it, it could have been for him, to be fair. But either way, it was good. I do remember one specific time where I was supposed to be grounded and I wasn't supposed to be playing this the Sega Genesis and he started playing Sonic in front of me and then eventually it got to a point where I started playing it and he was just like aren't you supposed to be punished oh well <laughs> so, oh well well get some more rings come on let's go yeah just to help me finish this <laughs> yeah. um but yeah and um I kind of had the intention through school like I didn't really know what I wanted to do but um I really loved video editing and I really loved theater. So I went down the sort of theater route and um, it wasn't until I had my best friend at high school kind of come up to me. It was just like, yo, I'm doing a podcast about Kingdom Hearts. Do you want to be my co-host? Like, do you want to talk about Kingdom Hearts and stuff? And um, it was about like 10 or 11 years ago when this happened. So it was when podcasts were like, starting like there it wasn't this big boom that it is now it was like this is the this is the early days ye old apple itunes you know um and uh so yeah so i started on um kingdom hearts union talking about kingdom hearts and then um one day the owner of kingdom hearts union kyle Winan, came to me and was just kind of like look do you want to do any game reviews? We have like sort of these games that need reviewing. We need some help. Uh, it would really be great if you could help us out with the game reviews. And so I just said, sure. Like I just, I didn't really have any expectations of going into games journalism. I just, I just wanted to help. And um, I got to review Trials HD was my first ever game. Um, and now that I'm, uh, now that it's been a long time since then, uh, Daryl, my husband, who is the co-owner of the site, um, <laughs> he was just kind of like, yeah, we gave you Trials HD because we wanted you to play a game that you weren't comfortable with to really see whether or not you could write about it. And I was just like, ah, okay, that's fine then. Because oh. I, I didn't really know what Trials HD was before then. I didn't know, like, I, it wasn't the type of game that I normally played. So, so yeah. And then, um, and then I kept doing reviews. I think I reviewed like Assassin's Creed, Fallout 4, like uh, uh, quite a few games I was able to review during that time. And I did a lot of news. And um, I also took over on the Final Fantasy Union podcast. And then uh, we did the Final Fantasy Union YouTube channel, which is now like really big. I mean, we're almost at 300,000 subscribers. Wow. And um, then uh, we just, I, it got to a point where I just sort of thought like, you know, 
I, I love doing this, but I kind of wanted my own project and I really wanted it to be something that was sort of beneficial to the industry or beneficial to people who are like me. And so I just thought like, you know, why don't I just start up a podcast about women in video games? Cause there's a lot of podcasts about gaming and about people in the games industry, but I, at the time there wasn't a lot of podcasts that were specifically about women um, who were in the industry talking about their role in the industry. And so I was just kind of like, all right, like, I'm just going to give it a go. You know, like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it. And I, I actually enlisted the help of like a lot of my friends in the, in the initial uh, season of the show. It was, it was mainly just people who I had, who I had met along the way. Um, and I was very, very, very grateful and appreciative of those first 10 people who I got to interview on the podcast. And then now we're on episode, I think we're coming up to episode 45, 46, which wow. is just mad. That's um, brilliant. Well done. And what have you <laughs> learned most? Like what's the recurring theme that or has has there been a recurring theme coming out from all of these wonderful women talking about the games industry? I think like one of the, there's quite a few things, but one of the things that really spoke to me and my sort of story um, was transferable skills. Um, there's been a lot of women who I've talked to who have either come from different industries or went into the games industry thinking about one thing and then changed to another once they found out that like, oh, I don't like what I'm doing or, oh, I, I, um, I just, the, my, my manager thought that maybe I would more be suited to that role or they just needed somebody to fill that spot. And they turns out that they loved doing that role. Um, and it's just about how, you know, even though something in the past, you may think like initially that it was a waste, like it's not a waste. There's always things that you can learn from every experience that you have um, in your career. Uh, I mean, for me, speaking is something that I do quite a bit. And so <laughs> having, uh, having gone to school for theater, um, I do feel like I can, you know, I can speak okay. I could do things and I can make people laugh and that type of thing. Um, so yeah, yeah. And it, it's, it's just kind of, it, it is that, that case of just using the, just finding the little things, finding what, what you can out of your past experiences to use in the future. And, you know, you could be in QA and you use the knowledge that you learned from being a QA to be a good project manager or um, use uh, information you learned from doing, composing like a short film or something in, and applying it to, to you creating music for a video game. You know, like, I think it's, I think it's really important um, to be a sort of broad, a, a broad person um, in terms of your skill sets so that you're adaptable and, and that type of thing. But like, it, it was just because I was so insecure myself about my own path into the industry and into my career, um, it was just really nice to hear from people who were like me and um, to hear that I wasn't alone in the fact that like, I just kind of uh, fell into things and am a, a, a mishmash of various <laughs> various careers uh, into one. I feel that's so true what you've said there because everyone has their own sort of journey into the games mm. industry and yeah you kind of are all like bit like magpies I suppose picking up <laughs> this you know skill or learning that craft and then kind of making it you know something amazing from it especially in indie um studios as well because you're going to have many hats on really when you're doing that there you're probably doing QA producing all sorts of things um but I uh, you know it's really interesting that um you mentioned sort of the theater mm. you know that's a really interesting way into it so mm. you know what what are the key sort of areas you feel that kind of really brought you to 
work on she plays um oh sorry she plays games yeah I mean I I guess I don't know like I I kind of always had this had this feel that I could be that I could be a voice actor or be some kind of like actress but then I always had something that held me back like some some kind of like I don't know something within me that made me think I'm not taking this seriously enough so I don't know if I have what it takes in order to do what this what this is and like that's for me I've accepted that and I'm okay with that because like you know when you're when you're doing acting like you really there is so much of you that has to be committed to like I'm going to do this and I'm going to kill myself doing it essentially and I'm gonna have to deal with the rejection after rejection and um I just kind of felt early on that I just didn't want to I didn't like how I felt when like when I was getting rejected in that way I didn't like feeling so sad and I attributed that to just the fact that it was just not it was just not for me like um I just I didn't want to feel that way and I don't think anybody particularly does but I definitely think some people deal with cope with it better than others and I was just somebody who couldn't really cope with that level of rejection all the time. Uh, so, I have to say, yes, there is a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like there's a lot, a lot. 